Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our continuing study of Revelation chapter 17 as we identify the great whore with the Roman Catholic Church. And we show with each phrase that we can look to history and to contemporary events and see that the Roman Catholic Church meets every single description thus confirming that the Vatican State Church is the great whore of Revelation chapter 17. In this study, we will read verses 1 and 2 and then begin our look at fornication with the great whore, part 1. Amen. Now we've begun to establish the identity of the great whore who we uh, began to uh, identify last time, the Vatican State Church. And I want you to get that in your, in your head. When you talk about Roman Catholicism, um, when you, and you say Roman Catholics, that is kind of an identification of the people. And we don't have a problem with the Roman Catholic people. Amen. What we have a problem is with the Vatican State Church. That's what we have a problem with. And uh, I get in trouble because on one side, everybody says, you're just anti-Catholic. I'm like, no, I'm anti-Vatican State Church. But then... I'll say what I believe. I believe they're saved Catholics. I've met some of them. They need to come out of the whore. They need to get in a good church, but pff, they're no worse off than a lot of the Protestants around here. And uh, uh, people say, hey, I don't believe Roman Catholic. Anybody can be in the Roman Catholic and be saved. Well, it's not up to you. <laughs> if a person believes the gospel, they're saved. The fact that they may be ignorant of a lot of things or overlooking and ignoring a lot of things, that's, that's something they'll deal with. God will deal with them. They'll answer for it at the judgment seat. But they're still saved. Amen. You're saved by the gospel. Amen. So let's uh, get into here. and We'll see that the apostolic age ended with Paul being beheaded in Rome. So you see, this is his final trip where he goes over around up to Rome. Rome is a very important city in world history and it is a very important city in biblical history and it is a very important city in church history and it is a very important city in prophecy. Uh, it's a shame and it's, it's, it's incredible to see how little people know about Rome whenever it is the central city when you look at all four of those areas ancient history, biblical history, and I don't say the same, two of the same because there's a secular uh, ancient history, then there's the biblical history and then there's church history and then there's prophecy to come and Rome is one of the central cities outside of Jerusalem it's number one on the list now, we'll, we'll now identify a document, well-known evangelicals fornicating with this great whore. But I want to go ahead and read these first two verses. Read it with me. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And that gives us our uh, context. Now verse 2 with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of their fornication. Now, we're going to look at the kings of the earth committing fornication at a later time in depth. Um, but we're identifying great whore and proving her identity by also identifying her history, ancient and recent, of fornication for which she shall be judged. And uh, we're going to look... Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we're going to look at uh, the ancient history. Uh, we studied in Pergamos, something we'll review, but in our study of the Church of Pergamos, we showed how the Babylonian priesthood came up through Pergamos over to the uh, pagan Rome and through Constantine into what's now known as the Roman Catholic Church. And we're going to look at some of that in the future in depth. Verse 1 is where we get the name given to us. Uh, to this uh, false religion, God gave this name. The name is the great whore. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. He doesn't just name call. He's telling you what, he, what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a religious system that is a religious whore. And now, note that her tactic is referred to as fornication. She's the great whore 
And her tactic is fornication. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So spiritual fornication is her tactic. Uh, what does that mean? It simply means that she uh, becomes intimate with all religions that she can in order to usurp them. And sometimes she's the aggressor. Other times she just has to sit back and welcome them in. Just like a good whore. Read the, read the Proverbs and you'll see that sometimes the whore will go out and with the words of her mouth, like honey dripping off of her lips, she will pull someone in and then death. Other times, uh, Judah and Tamar is an example, they go looking for the whore and she just has to receive them. That's what you're going to see with the Roman Catholic Church. In our last study, we looked at this photo. There's a harlot, prostitute, Rick Warren. And uh, we're going to, you're going to, if you don't think I'm telling the truth, you're about to see that I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to show you. But he is involved in this thing called Chrislam where he's yoking up with Rome with one hand and reaching around to the other world religions. And uh, you're going to see that this is pervasive and there's only two groups that aren't invited to the party, and that's Bible-believing Christians and hardcore Orthodox Jews. Those are the only two people not allowed at the table. We don't want to be at the table. Rick Warren is one of the main operatives bringing evangelicals back to Rome. Why is the Vatican visiting this evangelical church? Founder and pastor of Saddleback, Rick Warren, joins us for part two of our exclusive interview. Part two of my exclusive interview with Pastor Rick Warren. Why is the Vatican visiting his Saddleback church? And wait until you hear what his favorite TV program is. It's quite a surprise when the world of our live continues. Stay right here. Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the World of Our Life. Following the death of his son, Rick Warren has focused part of his ministry on mental health, leading to a collaboration with the Catholic Diocese of Orange County, as we reported last week. In the second part of our exclusive interview, Warren discusses the origins of his best-selling book, The Purpose Driven Life, a recent visit by a Vatican delegation and the channel he finds himself watching more than any other. Here's my conversation with Rick Warren. When I was writing Purpose Driven Life, it took me seven months, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning, I'd go to a little study, start at 5 a.m., I was fasting till noon, and I would light some candles and I would start writing and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. in the morning, I'd go to a little study, start at 5 a.m., I was fasting till noon, and I would light some candles and I would start writing and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. Before I uh, read, uh, wrote the book was, um, I asked the question, how do you write a book that lasts 500 years? For instance, um, Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis, right? uh, Practicing the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence, okay, The Desert Fathers, St. John of the Cross, Teresa of Evola. All of these great classic devotional work. What is your secret to reaching people every day, yeah. every week, yeah. not only in your writing, but when yeah. you speak to them? Yeah. What is it? What is this communication gift, yeah. if you will, if you could decode it? Because a lot of, a lot of preachers yeah. would like to know. <laughs> Well, Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. And I like this fishing motif. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the first thing is you have to go where the fish are. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not in church. You've got to go into the marketplace. Uh, You've got to learn to think like a fish. Uh, you've got to know what they like to eat. You've got to drop the, the bait at right, the, the right level. Uh, you, you use...
to all kinds of, Paul says, I become all things to all men that I'm in some way save son. So he say, when I'm with Jews, I become like a Jew to reach Jews. When I'm with Gentiles, I become like Gentile to reach Gentiles. Today he'd say, well, and, and the, the main thing is love always reaches people. It, authenticity. Humility. Pope Francis is the perfect example of this. Hmm. He, is a, he is doing everything right. You see, people will listen to what we say if they like what they see. see. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as our new Pope, he was very, very simple. And uh, as, as our new Pope, as, as our new Pope, as as our new pope 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 in fact there's a headline here in orange county and i love the headline i saved it it said if you love Pope Francis, you'll love Jesus. <laughs> oh, that, that was a headline? That was a headline. Oh. It was a headline. I saved it. I showed it to a group of priests I was uh, speaking to a while back. I love that. What is the obstacle, do you think? Yeah. Keeping Christians apart and away from that unity yeah. that Christ prayed for, that John Paul II was such yeah. a book, well, all the recent popes absolutely have, have every one of them done this outreach every we need one of to them. be one exactly uh, what is keeping these communities apart and what do you think is bringing them together well i think we need to go back to the words of saint augustine you know uh, in the essentials you know we have unity right. in the non-essentials we have liberty Diversity, yeah. and in all things we show charity and i i think this is really true There's the power of community. Tell me about your the little breather you take in the day when you watch television, which surprised <laughs> me. When we yeah. first met, you yeah. came up to me and said, hey, Raymond, and I said, yeah. I can't believe you watch this You know show. what? I'm an avid fan of EWTN. I, I make no bones about it. I probably watch it more than any Christian channel uh, because I happen to like. <laughs> well, you know what? Because you have more, more uh, uh, shows that relate to history. Uh-huh. And, and w if you don't understand the roots of our faith, that God has been working for 2,000 years, regardless of what brand of believer you are, God has been working for 2,000 years in his church. And if you don't have those roots, you're like the cut flower syndrome, or you're a tumbleweed. Um, I, I, one of my favorite shows, which you replete, often is the, the Chapel of Divine Mercy, really, which uh, I love. And when I've had a very stressful day, I'll come home, I've got it taped, and Kay and I, I will both listen, we'll put it on and just sit back, relax, worship. And, and in, that, in that time of reflection, meditation, quietness, I find myself renewed and restored. So hmm. thank you for keen, continuing to replay the Chapel of Divine Mercy. Thank Mother Angelica. Uh, thank you, Mother um, Angelica. When, when I walk here, I was struck. You have three images and personal notes yes. that confront the person walking into your yeah. office, which there I There is to say. Mother Teresa, yeah. Martin Luther King, right. and Billy Graham. Right. Hey, I want to tell you, that, that last little clip, Mother Teresa, 
Martin Luther King Jr. and Billy Graham. The brainwashed masses believe that those three people are three of the greatest people who ever lived. And I'm here to tell you, two of them are burning in hell right now. And I'm not judging them, I'm taking their word for it. If you read Mother Teresa's own writings, she said she was lost and in darkness. And she, she didn't believe. It's all documented in her own diary. Mar My, uh, Michael Luther King is his real name. Martin Luther King Jr. denied that Jesus was born of a virgin, said he was not divine, and did not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. His real name is Michael. Him and his dad both were Michael Luther King, and they changed their names. He's a communist. And he was a Christ-denying apostate minister. And Billy Graham, if you don't believe it, go watch the one hour documentary that you can see at BBF Ohio, free of charge. One hour, I took several weeks out of my life to document this because I was sick and tired of lies. Sick and tired of hearing people say Billy Graham went bad. Billy Graham's been bad since the beginning. He's been a tool of the Roman Catholic Church. And when people got saved at his crusades, if they didn't uh, go into apostate liberal churches and Roman Catholic churches, it was either because they said they identified with the church, like a Southern Baptist or uh, Assembly of God church, so they sent them there. But if they didn't say that they wanted to go there, they were sent to these liberal uh, apostate churches and the Roman Catholic church. And so that's why after 40 or 50 years of Billy Graham preaching crusades, America is a cesspool. When real preachers preached and people got saved, it changed their lives and they went to Bible-believing churches. Amen. And Warren the wolf is what Paul was afraid would happen. He said in Acts 20, 29, 30, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. You want to know who he's talking about there? Church fathers. Go read the so-called church fathers, and most of them are a bunch of heretics. Justin Martyr, who believed in the premillennial return of Jesus Christ, also believed that baptism saves, and denied that the Jews were the chosen of God. If you read these church fathers, that's who Paul's talking about. And so what you see in the Roman Catholic Church, when you see a Catholic priest, he has taken an oath to never read and interpret the Bible on his own and to submit himself to the teachings of Rome and the Fathers. That, that lightning was right on cue, man. <laughs> Grievous wolves shall enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. It's not We're not just worried about the atheist in the schools and the atheist like Richard Dawkins were these are people inside churches who will come into your church and corrupt it and destroy it they'll come into your church and without telling you change from the King James Bible to the ESV they will come into your church and without telling you, change it from the biblical gospel to the heresies of Calvinism or to some mindless slop like you see on Joel Osteen. But they won't announce themselves. They won't announce themselves. They're wolves. And if you stand against them, you get run out. Amen. Now watch this. This is a shorter one, just about a minute. It's not even a minute, 30 seconds. This is an ad Rick Warren signed his name to. He was asked about it, he admitted he signed his name to it, where he endorses what's called the coming home effort. If you're wanting more peace and real purpose in your life, then discover seven secrets to happiness in Tom Peterson's new book, Catholics Come Home. Coach Lou Holtz, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Pastor Rick Warren and Touched by an Angel's Roma Downey are all praising Catholics Come Home. God has an extraordinary plan for your life. So pick up your copy of the new book, Catholics Come Home, today and see how it will help uplift your life, bless our culture, 
and inspire you to help change the what world. What you just saw was not a spoof. It sounded like something off of Saturday Night Live, but it's not. And this insanity is really happening. And week after 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 week, people are going to church and not being told any of this. Because this is the transition from Philadelphia to Laodicea. And God is going to vomit these people. I believe every born-again Christian goes up in the rapture. There's going to be an awful lot of people left behind that call themselves Christians. If you're saved, you're saved. If you believe that gospel, you're saved. But there's an awful lot of people who are not saved, who call themselves Christians, who are filling Baptist churches and other fundamental churches and other evangelical churches. And when the rapture happens, some of these churches aren't going to lose very many people. They'll still have a quorum for their business meetings. Amen. Here's the great whore working in Berlin. They have built a church... It's going to be this massive, multi-million dollar church. And you're going to have a Catholic, and a rabbi, and a Muslim imam. And all three are going to meet in the same building and have different service times. All in Berlin. 60,000 people will pack Yankee Stadium tomorrow for a night of hope. It's a huge event featuring Lakewood Church pastor Joel Osteen and his wife Victoria. Before he arrived in New York, Osteen paid a special visit to the Vatican where he met with Pope Francis. Tonight, Osteen shares the experience with Local 2 anchor Dominique Soxa in a story you'll see only on 2 tonight. I'm here at Yankee Stadium in New York where Pastors Joel and Victoria Osteen are getting ready for Lakewood Church's Night of Hope coming up tomorrow night. As we sat down and talked about the preparations for the big event, Joel revealed to me an incredible opportunity he just had to meet with Pope Francis. I just felt very honored and very humbled. You know, seeing the Pope give the Mass to 100,000 people that day, you just see you know, he has such a heart to help people. I love the fact that he's made the church more inclusive, not trying to make it smaller, but to try to make it larger, to take everybody in. So that just resonates with me. But, you know, he really expressed his desire for us to pray for him. Mm -hmm. He asked us to pray for the Middle East. It seems like the Vatican was trying to send a message yes. by doing this. What would you say that is? I think the message is, is that they respect people, all people, and that they want to see unity. Was it surreal to be asked by the Pope to pray for him? Yeah, it was, it was amazing, um, you know, and even to go back in that part of the Vatican, mm -hmm. just so much history there. The places that we they took us through, and just uh, you feel that deep respect and reverence for God. Did anybody ask for a selfie with the Pope? <laughs> do, you, do you get any pictures? No. Any takeaways? Uh, we we got we got some pictures, but yeah. uh, not any uh, not any Can selfies. Can you text them to me? Yeah. With Rome behind him, Joel feels he has divine inspiration fueling his message for tomorrow night. Reporting from Yankee Stadium in New York, Dominique Soxa, KPRC. You notice how they're all in bed with the devil, and they're happy about it. Because they're hosting. I'm, I'm telling you, one of the things I've noticed, I, mean, I got a magazine about preaching sent to me. They were always sending me this free stuff. And uh, one of them was in the bag that you got at the pastor thing. But I get those leadership magazine, all these. And I've noticed that all these guys, they're just all in their pictures like, you know, like, <laughs> What, what, you know, what's the joke? You know, don't take a picture you, you know, tell me the joke. I don't want to see you laughing unless you share the joke. They all look like they're on, you know, something. It's, it's a, like a, the article will be about the serious situation in the Middle East. And the author's pictures up there like, and it, it's flesh. They're trying to win people by an appearance. And I love this clip of Ruckman where they, they said, people say, you know, I just don't like the way you talk. I don't like your presentation. He says, well, yeah, then blow it out your nose. <laughs> Think about how unintelligent that response is. If I'm looking at you and I'm saying, the house is on fire, get out! Say it nicely. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you're going to listen to what I say. If you're intelligent, you're not going to care how it's said. Because, hey, you know, I might just be in pain while I'm talking or being a, I had a bad day and I got a headache. 
I may not just be able to be Mr. Happy, but what if what I'm saying is the truth and you need to hear it? It compares them to dogs. Yeah, because dogs are like that. Animals. You, you can train a dog and, or you can just look at a dog and you can say, hey, how you doing there, buddy? I'm going to take you outside and shoot you in the head. Come on. And the dog be like, <laughs> but then you look at him and you say, come here, you mutt. I'm going to give you a treat. And he'll, no, I said get here. I'm going to give you a treat. Why don't he come? Because the dog responds to what animals respond to. But a human being shouldn't be like that. You're supposed to have intellect. You're supposed to have reasoning capabilities. Now, I'm not saying we should walk around saying, uh, you know, but still, if I'm speaking the truth, but if I'm speaking lies because I smile, that's why people are listening to these guys. They got this Colgate smile. There's actually videos where they... To get to Italy, many of the refugees had to endure many hardships, even the loss of friends and family. Pope Francis said that to lighten the weight of their suffering, they should share their pain among one another, helping and encouraging each other despite any differences in beliefs. E condividere le nostre esperienze, portare la croce in cuore e per uscire del, del, col malore del cuore che, 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 che amareggia la vita, no? E questo è importante che voi fate nella riunione. E anche quelli che siete cristiani con la Bibbia e quelli che siete musulmani col, col Corano, con la fede che avete ricevuto dei, dei vostri padri, che sempre vi aiuterà ad andare avanti quelli che siete cristiani con la Bibbia e quelli che siete musulmani col, col Corano, con la fede che avete ricevuto dei, dei vostri padri Jesus is not the exclusive truth in this anymore, never was in the Roman Catholic Church, but now it is as long as you will come to the table and let him sit at the head of the table you're welcome and that's what the point of this study of the great horror is. Uh, we're going to do these studies and we're going to put them together and it's going to be back to back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And someone can say, well, all right, we get the point. No, you don't. People aren't getting the point. And we're going to drive the point home. And we're going to keep going verse by verse. But as we go, we're going to see the evidence proving who this great whore is. And... Uh, even in my lifetime it went from where you didn't even have to really preach this because yeah. it was mentioned enough during regular services and the books that people read and the knowledge they had and the conversations they had everyone was on this page but just in my lifetime nobody's on that page, nobody's on that page. even right. Baptist Bible colleges or just regular Baptist run colleges when you go to the church history classes they teach you that you came out of Rome and that you are a Protestant who came out of Rome and gives you the idea that wow it would be nice if we could all just get back together with Mother Rome and that's what a lot of Baptists are doing yeah, the, if, you, if you really study church history not just some the Protestant church history is Roman Catholic church history with a Protestant twist to it but if you really read the history, then all the way back to the first couple of centuries, Christians were persecuted by Rome. And then under Constantine, if you didn't fall in line with the Nicene uh, Council, you were persecuted by Rome. And from that point on, the Donatus and the Paulicians and all these groups in the early years, the Waldenses, the Valdois and these other groups through this dark ages, there have been Christians outside of Rome always and they have been killed and tortured by this and that's part of what we're going to see later on that that's one of the evidences of who the great whore is